Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode two of the creative series. Last time we built a medieval house, as you can see, and I wanted to show you guys this uh, cool thing Skybridge Bob tweeted at me. He remade my house, uh, but he did it in Pocket Edition, which I think is really, really cool. So check it out. Uh, I'll put the picture up on the screen right now. And yeah, he was on Twitter. He tweeted at me, so I retweeted the tweet. If you want to go see that tweet, tweet, tweet. And um, yeah, but anyways, uh, I got a lot of cool comments and suggestions last time, and I think the one I want to try and do... Uh, because it's what I'm in the mood for, is a Japanese-style build. That was one of the suggestions. Um, and just so you guys know, for those of you who really liked last episode, but want to know how to um, kind of re- or, or interior decorate it, you can check out my Red Cubed episode. I believe it's episode 5. I built a house similar to this on the Red Cube server and interior decorated it. So check that out. Uh, but for now, let's get started on a Japanese-style build. All right, guys. So there are a lot of, like cool Japanese, Chinese, just kind of oriental patterns. They're probably more Chinese than Japanese. But uh, I wanted to try them out, and so that's what I'm going to do first, uh, because that's what really interests me about the build style, because I'm sure you've all seen um, people do those builds where it's uh, they kind of have those um, the houses with the weird roofs, like the pagoda things. Um, you've probably all seen that a million times, so I wanted to try something a little different, just like I did with the medieval thing, uh, but first, I just want to try and build one of these, uh, cool things. I actually saw this pattern, uh, in Empire of the Sun, there's these little lamps, and so I'm just literally gonna rebuild them. Um, uh, Empire of the Sun is a band, uh, the, the music video for Walking on a Dream is where I got this, so I'm gonna try it out right now. So let's go down couple blocks and go out two and then we'll go out three let's see enough to do a curve let's see no so let's go one down four up boom 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 like that I think and then halfway through we go like this I think that'll look good let's let's actually try go out one more Yeah, and then extend this out and put one more little curve. Um, let's see, we want it to be two away from there. Like that. Oh, uh, nope. Like, like that. Perfect. Hmm. That looks kind of cool. Let's, let's try and make this a little skinnier. There we go. Yeah, that looks cool. So now I'm just going to do the same thing on each side. Um, I do everything in creative mode without any cheats, mostly because I don't know how to use them. Uh, this is where most people would probably go and uh, do something with World Edit to copy it over. But I enjoy doing this, uh, mostly because it helps me get the pattern down. So I don't mind it too much. Uh, because a lot of the stuff I build in creative mode, I plan on building in single player. So it's nice to get the pattern down uh, so I know what I'm kind of doing. Uh, but yeah, that looks pretty cool. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make this into some sort of house, but uh, it's going to be interesting. I take a lot of inspiration from places. Uh, so, for example, the other day I was at a Chinese restaurant and I took a picture of one of the menus uh, <laughs> because it interested me. And I thought, oh, that would that would make a cool pattern. I uh, drew a few things out in my sketchbook. Like, for example, on the Red Cube server, as most of you probably know, Poet just left, um, as well as a few other people. And Poet's house was really cool. It was right at spawn, uh, and it was this sort of... It, it's medieval like all the other houses, but it, it had a really interesting shape to it and I was having trouble thinking about how I was going to finish it because I told everybody that I wanted to turn it into a town hall and they all agreed that that would be cool. So I was trying to figure it out, so I just went up, uh, pillared up, and did a sketch of it and then added on to the sketch and came up with something that was actually pretty cool. So hopefully I'm going to build what I drew. So that's another way I can do this stuff. Um, but yeah, just looking at patterns and stuff, taking inspiration from things I see in real life, uh, that is a good way to do this. Okay, so uh, one more, and then 
I will figure out what I want to do next with this. Right now I'm sort of putting off thinking about it. <laughs> um, like that, and then two. Uh, like this, this, this. Okay, and now I'll finish putting these little lamps on there. So, I've been looking at a ton of pictures and it seems like a lot of the Japanese houses that are really cool have like these green roofs. And there's really no block in Minecraft that looks like it. Maybe sort of like cyan, but it needs to be a little greener. Um, and there's, yeah, there's really no block that looks like it. And you need to really use a block that has stairs with it. Um, and so there's not many good options. I was thinking about trying the acacia wood stairs, but I don't think it would look quite right. Um, so I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. And I think I'm going to just put it off even longer by uh, making an acacia tree that looks like a bonsai tree. So I'm going to try doing that. Um, I'm going to do birch leaves and the acacia wood and see how that comes out. So wish me luck on that venture. <laughs> So, uh, look at that. It's actually really hard to use this wood because of all the orange. Um, I wish there was like some sort of half slab I could make to cover it up, but there's really no no way to like hide it. It's, it's tough. Um, so in the end I just kind of went rampage. Like at first I was like trying to find out clever ways to hide it, and then by the end of it I was just like, ah, oh, screw this, and I just placed the wood every which way, which uh, gives it an interesting look I guess um, if you look at it from the top it looks pretty dumb but if you look at it from the side it still looks pretty dumb uh, <laughs> but yeah it was fun um, but now I actually have to start working on this house and I still have no idea what I'm gonna do so hopefully it'll just come to me and hopefully I'll have a fun story to tell while that happens alright guys so for today's story I wanted to talk about um, just my childhood a little bit and how um, children have like a really warped sense of trouble. So I, re I remember I went to, I've, I've always gone to public school and I was like the biggest troublemaker I guess for some reason when I was in uh, like kindergarten and stuff and I don't remember it super well but I just remember uh, always being sent to the principal's office and they were always mean to me. They were like why can't you be like your brother blah blah blah. I remember um, just like some of the injustices that would happen like I remember one time I was on the bus and some kid pulled like the little bus alarm lever and then I got blamed for it and had to go to the principal's office or some other time um, I was on the I was at recess because we all had recess back that back then which is when you go outside and play um, and some girl some gross girl like threw a water bottle at me and I was like what the hell so I threw it back but when I threw it back, the cap comes off and drenches her. Like, all the water flies out, drenches her, and then she gets hit with the bottle. It was an ordeal, to say the least. And I get blamed for it. I get in tons of trouble. I go to the principal's office, all that stuff. And that would happen to me again and again. And, like, this is, like, literally my entire um, elementary school career was like this. Uh, just again and again and again get in trouble for things I didn't do but sometimes I did do them because I was also a troublemaker because you know if the teachers think you're a troublemaker eventually you're gonna be a troublemaker you know what I mean so like um, like one time 
there was this yogurt thing I had and my best friend Lewis uh, was sitting next to me and I was trying to open up this yogurt I couldn't do it I couldn't do it and then I squeezed it and all the yogurt flies out and lands on Lewis's lap and I get in tons of trouble he's like trying to tell the teachers look you didn't mean to it was an accident they don't care they're like nope you you got yogurt all over this kid you are going to re miss recess for the next two days which is basically hell um, yeah, basically an inferno uh, <laughs> at that age. So, and but I remember we would do all sorts of crazy things. Like in third grade, um, I had two really good friends, Ty and Lewis, and we would all go on the swings, and we would make up tricks and stuff. And I was always getting in trouble because we would do these crazy tricks. Like, see, you would swing as f like high as you possibly could swing and then let go of the chains. And if you fell, it, that one was called Superman. And if you fell, it was like, awesome. And so one time I like got a bloody nose from that um, and they got mad at me. Or like another time I got like a, a, blood, a loose tooth or like a bloody tooth. And one of them was called Aflac, where you just ran at the swing at full speed till you flipped over it. And while screaming Aflac, I don't, I don't know. Um, Another one was called Water Country. This one was horrible. You would swing as high as you could, and then at the bottom of your swing, you'd let yourself fall off the swing and slide along the ground. But we had like these wood chips that were like just so painful. And so every time you did it, your butt would literally just like be bleeding <laughs> practically because it was so damn painful. Um, but yeah, but I remember some of the stuff I would think I was going to get in trouble for was so ridiculous. Like, I remember specifically this one thing that kept me up for like months. Like, I could not sleep. And it's the, the silliest thing ever in hindsight, which was um, one time we were on the playground and I think so, we all called it the pancake, but someone had left like an orange peel, I think, on the ground for like a day or two. And it was like this soggy brown, it looked like a pancake, but much more disgusting. And everybody was like looking at it, we were all like, whoa, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> and so then finally I pick it up and everybody bolts, because I'm getting ready to throw it. And then all of a sudden I start spinning around with it, everybody's like, oh crap! And I can just go, it's heading for Lewis! <laughs> and then I let go of it, lob the thing, and it goes flying like 20 feet. And Lewis is like right on the part of the playground. We had like this big metal tree house type thing, looking thing. Um, and it just sticks to the pole like ping! And like, so this pancake is just stuck to the pole and it slides down and leaves like this goop. And then we just left it there. And we, it was really funny at the time, but then I went home and I'm like trying to sleep and I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna get in so much trouble for this. Like, oh dude, we're dead. Like, <laughs> this is it, it's all over. Um, and honestly, that kept me up for like months. I, I remember the next day we found the pancake at the bottom of the big twirly slide. Um, <laughs> and that twirly slide was fun. Like, we used to, this is turning into just recess stories, but I'm fine with that. Like, we used to, um, people would, the twirly slide was like made of plastic, and if you wore fleece, you would turn into like just this electric thing, like this. <laughs> So like if you went down the twirly slide, you'd collect so much static that people would stand at the bottom and what they'd do is uh, all the kids would touch fingers and then one person at the end would touch uh, a metal pole. So we'd form like one big conductive chain and the person going down the slide would just touch what the fingers and the shock would go all the way around and shock everybody who was standing there in line and everybody would be like, ah, and then it, like whoever was touching the pole would get to go up and be the shock and then you just like cycle through like that it was actually wicked fun but yeah I was always doing daredevil stunts like going um, we, we had this game I'm pretty sure called daredevil where we just tried to figure out how best to abuse the playground equipment to where adults were sure we were going to kill ourselves <laughs> um, which was always fun um, but yeah it's just funny how I, I just remember like Go for, going from middle school even, where it was like, hats, cell phones, gum, you're, you're literally persecuted, you go to jail for any of those things, and then I get to high school and it's like, dude, you know, wear the hat if you want to wear the hat, which I'm sure isn't true for every high school, but, you know, I, I go to a pretty free public school, so it's just like, as you grow older you get so many liberties, 
more than you had in elementary school, but yeah, I was always getting in trouble for stuff I didn't do, and because of it, I kind of turned into a little bit of a troublemaker, you know, because, I don't know, if people think you're a troublemaker, then you're going to be a troublemaker, and so, yeah, but some of the other things I got blamed for, I'm trying to think, there was just so many, like, it would always happen to me, I would, like, no matter what, one time I was in the bathroom, I walked in, and there was, like, toilet paper everywhere, strung around the toilets, strung around everything, and I was like, whoa, and then some kid comes in and just points at me, and then runs away, I was like, oh boy, <laughs> and I got blamed for that, it was crazy, I was always getting in trouble for things I didn't do, and the injustice killed me, and now I only get in trouble for things I actually do, <laughs> which is, which is nice, it's a, it's a luxury, but, um, it's funny because I have a knack for getting out of trouble that I get, like getting out of things and situations where I really should get in trouble like I, I guess it's because there were so many times when I was blamed for things I didn't do but now I've become like really good at talking to adults and like administrators especially and like getting them to think I was doing the right thing or it was just a misunderstanding which is pretty conniving and dishonest I guess but it's a very very <laughs> handy skill to have because now I'm really good at getting in trouble and maybe I'll tell you guys a little bit about uh, some of the things I've done in high school which are much more on the troublemaker side but um, yeah those are just a few stories from my elementary school so hopefully you guys enjoyed that I have plenty more stories so um, yeah and let me know what you guys want to see me build next time and what you want to hear me talk about alright so let's see how the build came out alright guys <clears throat> I hope you like that story. Once again, I, I don't know what story I told yet, uh, because I haven't gotten there. One, two, three, four, five. Um, right now, I'm just finishing up with these uh, lamps on the end, which look pretty cool. And I'm not sure whether I like the smaller ones or not. I need you guys to look. Alright guys, so I, I just ran out of space on my hard drive, and I've got a lot of footage to render, so I can't get rid of it right now, but I want to finish this episode up. So this might be a little choppy. Um, if you, I, I don't know why my redstone isn't working to disable rain, but anyways, if you, um, if you've been watching UHC, uh, or maybe my latest Red Cube, you'd notice a few things were really, really choppy, and I think it's because, um, I've been writing to my external hard drive, which is just plugged in through a USB, and the system can't really write to that, uh, to the hard drive fast enough. Um, so hopefully this isn't going to be choppy, uh, and if it really is, then I'll just delay the episode uh, a little bit so I can show you guys one last look around. But yeah, this is the entire build. Um, basically, I started by just doing some simple patterns and doing a little bit of research. Lots of fences um, for effect, and you'll see these little like half roofs, uh, kind of gable-ish things uh, crawling up the sides. I kept the original part of the post, but I raised the rest of it. Um, I did a lot of just random patterns, uh, and I think it turned out real nice. At this point, the uh, sides of were even, and the other sides were odd, so when I got to this level, I made it all odd, so that um, it's a little bit off-center, but then I could put the post here to complete the build, sort of. So that's why it looks like that. I put the little tips on the edges of the roofs uh, to give it that Japanese look, and I think the wood complements the clay really nicely. It does look pretty similar to this. Uh, but it's a little bit darker wood, so it gives it a different sort of look. Um, over here you can see I was experimenting with some cherry trees and a bonsai tree. Uh, so to finish this up, I just wanted to grab some bone meal, and I just wanted to sort of go down uh, with some gravel and uh, maybe some cobble um, and make a little bit of a path. So uh, let's see. just like that over to the door and then you go in and fill it I actually prefer to use more gravel than cobble um, so there you go and this technique I didn't used to like it uh, but we've been using it a lot on the red cube server on the new uh, map reset and I actually really am starting to enjoy it a little bit so 
That's why I'm using it here right now. And there we go. So we got a nice little path going over here. And there you go. Now to bone meal some of it. Like this. Boom, 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 boom. Bone meal all around the trees. Uh, now dig a pond. Whoops. Get that right there. Okay, and now we can fill it up with ice. Uh, which I don't think in creative mode if you break it, it works. So I'm going to have to go to uh, survival here real quick. Um, but yeah, just like that. This is the easiest way to do it. I guess it, uh, since I'm in creative mode, it's not the easiest way. But when you're in survival, it is. So you just go through, break all the ice. And it'll make some source blocks. There we go. Oh, one more there. Now you break the ones around the edges. And this should get the whole thing, I think. Almost. Yeah, there we go. A um, few things missing here. Just go like that, um, that, and yeah, I'm just showing you guys how you can do this in survival real quick. Um, so yeah, there we go, pretty fast. So now we got a pond, and um, again, hopefully the video is not choppy so you guys can at least see what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, just bone meal around it, we got our nice Japanese garden. Uh, come over here. I was thinking about making one of those nice Japanese bridges, uh, but I'm sort of out of time for today, so I think that's going to be it. Um, I'll try and get the world download for you guys soon, maybe episode three, but I hope you guys like this episode. Uh, only thing I have left to do is put all the materials down. Um, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.